Welcome back, guys. And we are on a potential map point in the favor of Nocturnal Gaming. If they take this map, they will take this series. And what a series it's been. We're going to have a, another ZVP. And all of them have chosen their uh, their player, Riser. And on Acolyte, Skytoss could be incoming. We cannot rule that out for a second. That's true. It definitely favors uh, more more macro play. Um, we'll see what these what these players uh, what these players get into. Looks like it's going to be a little more macro here. We can just jump on, jump on in. I think it's going to be a hatch first out of our mm -hmm. out of our Zerg player Gideon. Yeah, I I think it definitely Ooh. would be. Or well, Nexus so, first. Yeah, Nexus no surprises. From Ryzer, actually. Nice. I, I think it would be difficult to say. Um, I mean, it's difficult not to say that this was this could be Sky Tops because it's so diff easy to take three bases, and I think once that Protoss can it, it can take that third base and start getting carry production out, or even go to Mass Oracles. Mass Oracles is also super good on this map because they're so fast and they traverse the big map very quickly, and it's also just not easy to take three bases to get that economy up for Mass Oracles. Uh, I really wouldn't be surprised if we even get it a super late game into carriers at some point, but we we, oh, oh, yeah. we, we shall see. Yeah, we've even seen carriers kind of trickle back in uh, to pro play too, thanks to Hero carrying the banner from Protoss. Yeah, pretty there's, there's a guy. <laughs> yeah, they're so good. There's a guy in EU named Goblin um, who plays two base carrier. I mean, you think like two red carrots doesn't it doesn't that doesn't sound like a viable strategy? But wow, he makes it work. It's it's quite scary how he gets so many carries out of just two bases, and then from there he just takes four bases so quick. Because what can the Zerg do? And it just starts to just dominate the, the Zerg player. Well, don't worry, it's all going to be fixed post BlizzCon because interceptors are going to cost 15 minerals instead of 10 minerals. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's the nerf we've been looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts, Protoss players. <laughs> Gravy trains oh, coming to an end. Uh, this is pretty interesting from Keaton. He's going to take the third base here. I think it's it, it is easier to defend drops and or defend your three bases if you take this, the base that Keaton's taken because you can spread creep pretty easily. And it's not this huge chasm that's between the natural, the normal natural and the third base here. Uh, but, I mean, a lot of people just take that third base because it's easy to defend into, because there's only one ramp into the main. But taking this base does allow you. It, it is closer in the sense where you can spread creep much, much, much easier and get across to that base quicker. Yeah, I, I, I think just generally just expanding away from. I know at least it's true in TVZ. Just expanding away from your opponent as a Zerg is is pretty nice. So I don't think you really want to. Give your opponent an opportunity to just march across the middle of the map and start attacking your third. But uh, yeah, it looks like very very macro oriented builds coming out from both of these players. A uh, really quick third from from Gideon and just a lot of early tech coming out of Riser. Seeing the Dark Shrine, I guess this is maybe going to be the Archon drop. I'm yeah, really I can sure. imagine it is. But if if Gideon doesn't see this coming. I'm sure he's going to put blind swords up at some point, but if, if, if these DTs walk into a base and it's exposed, I, I don't want to say it's game over for the Zerg play, but that's really, really bad because it's not an all in and all for the Protoss. You can even just make them to Archons and make them really, uh, they, they are so important units for, for the Protoss. I, I mean, he sees the four gateways, he should know. Yeah, he did, and, he did I mean, scout the, the, the Dark Shrine. Uh, oh, did he? As well, yeah. I don't know if he clicked on it, but he saw it morphing back there. Oh, yeah, so that. Oh, he's coming in to all confirm. he really needs. Yeah, okay, well, all he needs to put up spores and get a few notes out, and he'll be fine. Um, but, it, I mean, it's not an all in at all from Protoss. This is fine that it goes scouted. It's That's quite normal. But what is interesting is Ryze is going for charge. Um, but it, okay, he it does look like he's going to take a third base. I was going to say maybe he's going to follow uh, the archons up with like a charge all in, but he he, he could do some archon charge uh, attacks around the map and see how see how that goes. But these DTs are still pretty dangerous. If 
if they don't, if you don't get that spore surrounded. Oh. No, he's gonna. Runs. I think he's gonna get the spore before any DCs go down. Oh, and the, uh, how does he hold the space? I don't think there's no layer on the map. Oh, there is. Okay, so maybe he can get overseer in time. But he's he's most probably going to lose the space, and that's super bad for for Geenan. That is, oh, that's so so bad. You, as I said before, to lose that base, you lose so much production. It's just not a position you want to be in as a Zo player because now you have to retake it. Protoss is going to have his third base anytime soon. He's going to be mining more than you. That's that's I think that's actually really sloppy from from Gideon because he had the lay, he had the spores, he just needed to make sure he was surrounding them. Yeah. And these these TTs, and now these TTs, he's not even going to lose any TTs. He's just going to go somewhere, and most probably morph them into archons at some point. And they they just have also so such good value in doing archon drops and keeping the Zerg busy. He's going to double expand Gideon to make up for it. But he's going to get so far behind and, and Ryze is not stopping there. He's adding on many gateways at home. He's going to go for one big attack and try and end this game. I don't think the second expand is uh, long for this world. DT dropping oh, yeah. the line over here. I think this is going to have to be a cancel. Not really any games ha around here. Yeah, no way to save that one. Again, there's no creep spread at all. These queens are going to take forever to get you. There's one Hydra, but there's just not enough damage from that one Hydra. And he could just get free damage. Oh, he does lose one DT, but it's not that big of a deal. He can just warp in another one. And he can, he can just make them into Archons whenever he feels like it. And I just think Ryzer's in a much, much, much better position than Keaton in this game. Yeah, supplies are even starting to show it. I think it's Zerg. You're supposed to always be up in supply anyway, right? How that, uh, that race yeah. works. Oh, yeah. Well, I wonder, especially the matchup of the way it is now. Uh, because Protoss goes for such tech-heavy units. So you, you expect the Protoss to be behind in, in army supply and uh, in the in the work account as well. But so so even, actually, at this point. It's just looking really good for Ryzer. I, I don't even think that there's bailings on the way. I don't think there's a baiting nest, which is... Okay, there is a baiting nest. I didn't see that. Then may, m maybe you can hold this attack that's coming. I really think that he's just going to warp in another DT and ma make some some zealots and just destroy this base. Let's, but let's see what happens. He is getting stormed behind, so he's, he might just not do that at all. <laughs> I think Eden is sort of sniffing out this drop, but it manages to slide in behind him here. Warpers him so fast. It's another six, yeah. sixth round so quickly. I think he might lose this wall prism though. Oh, no. Okay. But it, it is pretty trapped now. Oh, he's going to lose the wall prism. Oh. Yeah, surely it's dead now. Yeah. Okay, so that's nice for for, for Gideon. That was uh, super important for him to get back in this game. But he's he really is so far behind. He's just made a whole lot of drones to get back even close to the work account. Ryze is just building up a beautiful army back at home, which will just wreck whatever Gideon has. He's got to hope for some amazing baning hits, but with the storm and with the archons, I just don't see that happening. Yeah, he is a slight upgrade lead uh, right now, the two melee attack to one, but that plus two Protoss ground weapons is on the way. I imagine will probably be done by the time any kind of real attack is underway here from Gideon. Yeah. I'm those immortals pack a punch, but when they have plus two, wow, they, they do even more damage. And um, Gita's just got to find a way back in this game. I do. He has got his fourth base up now. He's got a decent drone count, so he's okay in that sense. But as I said before, you, you want to be ahead in the Protoss in, in supply. He, the Protoss just has such a tanky army, such a tech-heavy army, whereas Gita's army is pretty flimsy. He's got to hope for some really good banning, banning shots and kill these Templar before they get... Planket storms all over his army. This is, this is. He's just got to hope for a, a really sick engage. But I, I can imagine that uh, Ryzer is going to take the game with this push. But let's see how it goes. Yeah, the Zlings uh, run into an immortal. That's not. That's not fun. A little kind of, yeah. little kind of uh, splinter force moving up the north side of the map while this this doom army is coming up the middle. That's a lot I of. I thought storms. he was going to go. <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was going to go for a base trade and that would be the worst thing to do because of he could just warp into Storm at home and warp some Zealots and they do so well against these Hydras.
But now there's, there's so many bainings. You just need to get. Oh, Ooh. okay. Oh, but he loses all his ten. Oh, okay, he didn't lose. I thought he lost all his templar, but he did get. A, those are really nice bailing hits. Oh, the storms oh. all over this hydro army, and it's just gonna melt. There's no war prism. So th this attack, if he holds his attack, it, it it will end. But at what cost? I think he's gonna do a lot of damage before it does. Bargates are on the way. Lurker Den's also on the way for Gideon. I think Ryza is going to try and. and uh, Macro, he's uh, we try and go to Stargate behind this because I, I think it, it it might just end the game, but it, it, it's doomed to fail without that war prism. You definitely need that war prism. But another base goes down. Keaton's on two bases now. He is going to clean this army up eventually, but at what cost? Look at the army supply. Ryza's army is just way, way ahead. He's getting Fleet Beacon, two Stargates. Now, I don't even think he needs that. He's just so far ahead now. Oh, and TT's still causing mayhem up here in the in the top left. Yeah, I mean, the supplies are relatively comparable, but I mean, there's two mining bases, really one mining base. Uh, this this main is looking pretty light at this point, so I think all Riser really has to do is just just sit back, just remake units, nine gateways on the way. <laughs> uh, Starport's two and three coming up. He looks like he has all the tools to, uh, to play this game out, and yeah. Yeah. positions not not there but he's sticking in there he's gonna give it his best yeah i think the only way he gets he loses this game rises right, if these bailing hits get ridiculous ridiculously good hits and then uh he just follows it up with a big attack because he's just so far behind with two bases going down but he's gonna go for tempest that's that's really 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 interesting most zerg players i mean most players players just go straight into carriers I mean, Tempers are still pretty strong because it's so difficult to get underneath them with a weaker army. But it does look like he's yeah. just gonna... He's just gonna stay at home, right? So I think, I think that's the best choice for him right now. He's just so far ahead. He could... He definitely could head across the map and win the game, without a doubt. But it is a bit of a risk. But now with the War Prism, I think it it should be okay. But we shall see with, with the Lurkers. I wonder the if, map. He, if he scouted these uh, lurkers, or if this is just sort of a guess from him. But I really like the the oracles and, and tempest, at least uh, as far as like countering uh, countering lurkers. No. Yeah, that's so true. The, the tempest do such a good job against the lurkers. Like the lurkers have such a high, uh, long range, but tempest just outrange them with the oracle tagging. But if he does run into a lot of lurkers and starts losing half his army. It could go in Gideon's favor, but I think the supply is just telling a story. He has, he's had no production, really. He's only had, had two base production for a long time, and Ryza's just uh, uh, outproduced him at this point. Ooh, that's a lot of lurkers. <laughs> I think he should just lift some units and go into one into the main. Yeah. And just yeah, start sniping, sniping tech there and make these lurkers reposition. I think that's, that's the key right now. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to do some warpings in the in, in the space at the uh, back here. Oh, it's going to be DTs as well, and DTs just do so much damage. Oh, but he's going to lose the war prism. No, all right, GG's uh, called GG. anyway. Yeah, I think. Are we going to have game seven? Yeah, we are going to match point. Yeah, I think he. I think he ran some links into um, in a riser's fourth and saw like the 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 cannon fortress and like. Six Tempest said, ah, I don't know if we can get this yeah, one. No, yeah, I don't think you can come back there. <laughs> yeah, so, no, they both on to their last players. We're going to go into game seven. First time in this in this tournament, I believe, which is really, really, is. really, really cool. I think it is. We're getting our money's worth out of this week's tournament. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.